This device is called a water alert or a door exit sensor. It normally goes onto the person's front or back door and there's magnetic contacts which are attached to the device that go across the door. So whenever the door is opened, those contacts are broken and this device then knows that that individual has gone outside. They, become, they come in a variety of formats. One of them can play a message, perhaps from a family member, to say, person, come back in, it's too late to go outside or it's remember to take your, wear your hat, wear your coat, remember to take your keys. Whatever audible message might be useful for that individual. These devices again are linked to the, our community alarm service down in Gorgie and we would know that that individual has gone outside. We would follow our response protocol perhaps to alert a family member to go, out and, to go outside and look for the individual. If the person is lost then it is escalated to the police and they're regarded as a missing person. This device is called a cooker isolator device. It works for both gas and electric cookers. It knows if the person's left their, their unlit natural gas on and it closes the person's cooker down. It also knows if they've left, um, for example, food unattended on the hob, which the heat from that hits the heat detector in the person's ceiling and again it closes the person's cooker down. The client can reactivate the cooker by punching in a four digit code or if it's not safe for the client to use a cooker anymore, it's the carer that would punch in the code to start the cooker and then when they've left to, f to switch the cooker off. So that the client is left with a cooker in the home which is completely tamper proof. This device is called a flood detector. It knows if there's water has made contact with these two brass contacts at the back of it. The device is positioned on the floor where it's most likely to meet water, for example at the side of the dishwasher or in the bathroom at the back of the sink so it's not going to get kicked out of the way or positioned just above on the skirting board. The device sends a, a silent alert through to the community alarm service via the alarm unit. And this, again, the staff there would follow the response protocol. So they may phone the person up and ask if they've left their taps running, if the person doesn't have a cognitive um, impairment, or they may phone family members or visit the property to make sure that there's not a, a, a flood in the, in the building. This is a bogus collar switch. It's normally positioned at the person's front door. So if they look through the peephole, see there's someone that they don't, they don't want to answer the door to, but don't feel able to open the door and tell that person to go away, or they, they don't know who that person is, simply press this button. That sends a silent alert to the alarm unit and again to our call centre in Gorgie. We would then escalate that to the police, for example, or to the person's family or friends. In order to access the range of telecare service that I've shown you today, you can go to the Council's website www.edinburgh.gov.uk. Each of the 32 local authorities in Scotland have got their own telecare service and you can go to their website or ask for the information from the local directories. It's normally based on an assessment which is conducted by the client's occupational therapist or social work department. In Edinburgh we have a range of assessment officers um, who are based over in our head office at Waverley Court but most of the other local authorities in Scotland have got access to the client's OT or social worker to do the telecare assessment on their behalf. Um, within Edinburgh, once the assessment is done, we can install the equipment usually within that same working week, it's usually within five days. For people who have come from hospital, for hospital discharge clients, um, ourselves and the other local authorities do prioritise those referrals and we could install the telecare equipment usually within 48 hours. But like I said, for more information, go to each local authority's website. Thank you.